Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Hope you had a great trading week and let's get into the week ahead. So week ahead, uh, short synopsis from trading economics is in the US earnings report, you've got the Michigan consumer confidence and the trade balance data will take the spotlight. Also, the focus will be on uh, central bank meetings in Australia and inflation data in Germany as well. That's pretty much the pairs that we're looking at. Finally, the UK um, are, will be posting their fourth quarter growth figures and Canada, uh, the unemployment, oops, uh, unemployment rate. So that's really um, what to look at for the week ahead. Um, and let's get into some, uh, some more detailed analysis of, about what happened uh, during the past week. Lots to go over with the dollar. Um, and uh, yeah, starting off on the dollar index, which is basically just a measure of dollar strength against um, other currencies like the uh, euro, the pound and the yen. So um, dollar had a pretty uh, bullish price action on uh, Friday over the past couple of days due to uh, really non-farm payroll numbers uh, coming out with a massive surprise, the US payroll surprise with surge as jobless rate hits 53 year low. So employers added 517,000 jobs in January above all estimates. And the report raises doubts about a looming recession, uh, says uh, economists. And so ultimately um, the number um, is a great number and again it raises doubts on a looming recession uh, why is that important is because fundamentally <clears throat> currencies are driven by three main things which are the economy um, inflation as well as monetary policy like interest rates now um, in the group on the day, um, about 12 o'clock midday uh, before the actual data came out, um, uh, Robert, who was in the private members group, was asking about any insights into non-farm payrolls and how it goes, uh, how it might go. And our job isn't necessarily to try to predict what the number is going to be. Um, as far as you know when it comes to fundamental analysis it's more about what it really means over the medium to long term, right? And so what I said was if jobs come out stronger, it means inflation may be sticky because inflation and unemployment are inversely correlated. Higher unemployment means inflation coming down, according to the Phillips curve. If inflation is seen as coming down, right, which is basically lower employment and higher unemployment, yeah, because they're inversely correlated, inflation comes down, then in, high, um, in, unemployment goes higher then the Fed are less likely to hike rates, um, um, uh, hike rate rates, okay, <laughs> and uh, and end their hiking cycle sooner. But the opposite actually happens. So in fact, there was lower unemployment and higher employment, right? Which meant that the Fed are more likely to, um, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily hike rates, but they're not um, looking to, end their hiking cycle sooner and that's basically what um, is, is driving the uh, the dollar ultimately though the dollar will be coming down um, over the medium to long term and I say will not necessarily to use um, absolutes but it's more likely that the dollar will um, will come down there are various reasons for that but I think in the short term the dollar really is pulling back and it was really due one from a technical and um, technical perspective anyway we had this you know this major drop um, when you look at you know the, the rally that it went on um, from last year uh, this is basically just a pullback and we were looking for a, you know the dollar to kind of pull back significantly now is this is this a sustained rally I don't think so um, I'm still my bias is still too short on the on the dollar and we'll see uh, what will happen uh, with that. But um, Citibank, um, this is one, just one of the many banks that we analyze in the in the group. Um, uh, we we uh, look for the uh, confluence uh, with the banks. Um, they uh, break down fundamentals as well. They're not looking at really, you know, they look at technicals too, but their uh, forecasts are driven by fundamental analysis. 
they say that uh, for the dollar, there are a number of factors which may drive the dollar lower through 2023. First is the, is that the US is expected to enter into a recession uh, at a time where Europe may be recovering and China expected to have exited from their zero COVID policy. So the dollar performance is likely to be much more subdued uh, and mostly negative in a US only um, recession. Second, when global uh, leading indicators uh, X US excluding the US turn higher there is meaningful dollar depreciation over the following 12 months there is likely to be greater volatility in rates and FX over the current quarter that sees the DXY in a hundred to a hundred and eight range right uh, and it says for the second half however uh, the DXY may be back to the 95 96s so um, ultimately what you're looking at if you're looking at 108 we could see a decent pullback depending on you know the numbers right depending on obviously how that plays out probably somewhere around here would be the absolute highest 107.99 uh, see how that supply zone uh, the top of that supply zone pretty much lines up with the 108s um, uh, we could see a pullback to this area where the where they're talking about the ranges or what we know is to be an auction I'm not saying that prices are going to go all the way up here um, no idea but if it does i'm still looking to short the dollar right at, at certain areas so for me i still think um one data point does not make a, an absolute turn in in buying the dollar over the medium to long term so my this is just a uh, basically uh looking for me anyway looking for pullbacks of of course not financial advice so um that's where I am just looking for pullbacks. But if you are looking at buying the dollar, right, then you'll have to really look for a pullback into a you know a demand zone, which would be somewhere around there now. So let's delete this. Let's stop putting that there. That's where the demand zone is, daily demand. So you're looking for a pullback into this, uh, the 101s, and then you're looking at, uh, you know, a move to the upside. But for me, I'm looking at um, some short trade confluences anyway, not necessarily trading the dollar index. So um, yeah, good news for the um, for the dollar, basically what they needed, but I don't think it's changing anything in terms of um, uh, monetary policy, maybe an, an extra hike or, or so uh, the Fed might price in, the market is pricing in, but Again, that would be priced in, and then you know we're probably entering into some sort of a range or auction. And so, if you want to get access uh, to um, you know the uh, the Citibank uh, analysis as well as many other uh, bank analysis, um, the uh, enrollment for Trading One Eighty, the private group and the Discord group, uh, opens uh, tomorrow. If you're watching this on Sunday, sixth of February. And not only will you get access to many uh, bank analysis, but you'll also get access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet as well, where I give you my uh, bias, uh, weekly bias on whether I am long or short or neutral on a currency pair um, based on fundamental analysis. And um, and yeah, so if you do want to join and you've been waiting for a while, um, it is coming up and it will only be open for about a, about five days. So um, it's going to close maybe the, the 10th, uh, I think it's a Friday uh, of February, and then I'll be closed for maybe another few months or so, as I like to keep the group concentrated, um, as I find that's the best way to to really get you know the most out of, or you guys can get the most out of uh, of the group. Anyways, uh, going back to the technicals, uh, so moving on to the dollar yen, and again, the dollar yen, I'm looking for a pullback, ultimately, um, hopefully we can get something uh, as high as here, um, the 134s, 135s, um, or maybe the 137s to look for some more short trades, uh, reason being is because uh, the Japanese yen, they're looking to uh, change their monetary policy. Um, to start um, not necessarily hiking rates but uh, enact monetary policy that will um, appreciate their currency is what I'll say um, and their yield curve control and so yeah dollar pullback uh, just basically makes it um, I can buy the dollar for or sell the dollar for cheaper or buy the, buy the yen against the dollar for, for, for cheaper so that's where I am um, looking for um, if you're looking for pullbacks on the dollar again back down into that demand zone before looking at any kind of uh, long trades moving on to the 
dollar Swiss and again you're gonna see any dollar pairs pretty much for now uh, start to uh, um, I guess sell off if you're looking at the uh, the quote currency you know the dollar obviously being the base currency on this one and so we're just seeing you know buys and so again if you're looking to buy the uh, Swiss franc which I'm, I'm actually not looking to buy the Swiss franc at all I'm looking to trade this pair um, you know you're you're pretty much uh, looking for I would say sell trades at least around about 94 cent area you've got a couple more um, supply zones above there as well I'll just do that as, as one yeah it's probably one zone um, but again the Swiss franc not really a buy in my book if I'm gonna do anything I'm gonna probably buy the dollar over the over the Swiss franc so um, again with that being said probably looking at this area here as a demand zone now and looking for a pullback again and just look for intraday entries that would be it um, dollar cat and dollar cat um, again the dollar rallying for now and not really a pair that I'm interested in at all um, the cat not doing so well but I think they will when once oil starts to really uh, look to take off but um, any pullbacks on the on the US dollar, you're looking at, and uh, you know, pretty much that's the trade. If you're looking at um, uh, any sell trades, anything I think above this uh, 135, 1.352 area is decent for a uh, sell, or you're looking at probably just above that, the 137s, looking at that as a as a sell trade but again I'm not really interested in this pair at all New Zealand yen um, New Zealand yen <laughs> going crazy uh, New Zealand uh, dollar so um, yeah so we're looking at now a bit of a major pullback into this area um, I do like the commodity currencies against the dollar buying the commodity currencies but um, that would be probably the uh, the Australian dollar, not the uh, New Zealand dollar or the Canadian dollar. But the Australian dollar has the most to benefit for, against the uh, US dollar. Um, if you want to buy the New Zealand dollar, of course, obviously now at the bottom of this demand zone is decent, or a pullback into uh, the probably the one uh, sorry the zero point six two round number would be decent as you can see it's been used as all um, support and resistance in the past as well so supply and demand zones are just past support and resistance um, uh, I should say the other way around uh, support and resistance is really just past supply and demand zones and so um, what we use support and resistance for is just confluence within these uh, these demand zones um, and uh, yeah so you've got that there and I guess if you're looking for a bit more of a pullback probably yeah maybe the 61s uh, around here as well it would be decent for a potential buy if you're looking at buying the uh, the New Zealand dollar if you're looking at selling the New Zealand dollar and buying the um, the US dollar then I think a pullback just above this um, into that supply zone the 65 40s to above to 65 80s would be um, uh, the best area to look for uh, some sell trades and then you've got a bit of uh, fresh air before you get to the um, the next uh, supply zone uh, looking at the pound now I'm I was bearish on the pound I've been bearish on the pound for a while now I, re I was actually looking to get involved if I'm looking to buy the dollar against any currency it would have been against the pound <clears throat> and that would have been it I was looking for bit of a move above the market before getting um, short but it just didn't happen so um, you know due to obviously the uh, non-farm payroll news prices have gone through that demand zone and now we're getting a bit more of a pullback I do think though I really want to be if I want to be short on the uh, like I said the pound I'm looking at that area there and, I'll, and for me I'm gonna get looking for uh, sell trades and buy the dollar <clears throat> although I'm bearish on the dollar I'm more bearish on the pound. Uh, the pound, um, uh, fundamentally, the UK faces the bleakest outlook in generations as more Britain stop working. So bleak outlook leaves UK facing worst 20 years since 1938. Potential growth now less than half the pre-COVID average. So the UK economy is not looking uh, great at all. 
and uh, many of the guys in, in, in the group, in the Discord group, uh, know this and uh, they're short on the pound and um, some of the guys have been doing really well, especially on that, um, that pound-yen uh, trade. So, um, so yeah, basically just looking for pullbacks into uh, this area and that would be my you know, personal bias. Um, there is obviously demand zones. If you do want to be a buyer at a pound, then you're looking, I'd probably say the bottom end of that, the 119s would be the probably the better area. As again, you have a bit of confluence with uh, some support and resistance um, in that area. That's obvious. Right there. Um, so that would be the first area, but again, not really looking to buy that pound at all. Um, and what does Citibank say? Citibank are saying that uh, on growth, the UK lags with the slowest recovery uh, to pre-pandemic levels of real GDP. Inbound mergers and acquisitions also remains weaker than the global trend, which likely represents a loss of confidence in the, U in the future of the UK's business model in a post-Brexit world. The sole main upside risk to the pound uh, comes from global risk um, on via US soft landing combining with Europe and China bottoming. Yeah, so the, the, the pound um, is uh, sensitive to risk on. So if there is, you know, if the markets do turn risk on, that'd be the one kind of saving grace for the pound. But um, I don't, you know, even if you're buying from a risk on perspective, you know, do you really want to buy the pound when you can buy, you know, Europe who are doing better, you can buy the Canadian, you know, economy who are doing better, the uh, New Zealand economy who's doing better, the Australian economy who's doing better, right? Why would you buy the pound? So um, I think they're the worst, um, the worst of the worst, right? And so um, for me, I think the, the long term or the, the at least the medium term, you know, is to the short side. And so any pullbacks for me, I'm looking at getting uh, short on this currency pair. But again, there are long opportunities if you want to take those. Uh, Euro dollar, so waiting for this pullback, I'm waiting for ages, I'm waiting for a decent pullback anyway. And uh, you know, prices have come down to this demand zone. Again, I'm not too keen on this demand zone. I think the better price is gonna be down into the 106s, 105s. So I think if prices come down here, that is gonna be um, a nice opportunity. Right now, I still think we're um, quite quite high although you know we've passed uh, we've kind of closed below that monthly moving fair value and so um, decent potentially um, for a pullback but I think maybe some there might be a bit more momentum if you want to call it momentum but um, repricing uh, of the uh, of the dollar you know against the euro and we could how well, I say we could but I, I do want to see it come down to this area here if it, can be, if it comes down to the 106s 105s I think that is going to be like I said uh, nice uh, for a potential buy the uh, the European Central Bank is still hawkish so the ECB plan for next Big hikes makes Lagarde the last hawk standing, right? So half a point uh, rate pledge for March cements Eurozone aggression and the Fed, Bank of England and others are dialing down their rate hike stance. So while they're, you know, the ECB is still very hawkish, obviously the Fed um, are dialing it down. Although again, due to non-farm payrolls, uh, you know, on Friday, um, the Fed could add an extra hike on onto their uh, onto their projections um and but uh, like all central banks you know most banks uh, see ecb slowing interest rate hikes after march all central banks are pretty much going to start to slow their their uh, hiking cycle inflation is coming down um and it says most economy um, economists predict the european central bank will slow the pace of its uh, interest rate hikes following another half point increase in march so after march you know basically the 50 basis point hike which is expected then they're probably going to start maybe doing 25 basis points etc etc now um uh, the ECB deposit rate is set to rise. ABN AMRO, Morgan Stanley, Nordea, ING, Greenberg, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Berenberg and uh, Commerce Bank. Um, they're all pretty much, um, you know, expecting these. These are their forecasts. And they all expect their the, the, the ECB deposit rate to rise, right? Um, but then start to potentially look to slow down, right? So you've got the 3.8s um, from uh, Socio, uh, is it Socio Society General. Um, you've got uh, Goldman Sachs Credit Suisse, Citibank, Rabobank, uh, Generali, and Uni, 
um, you need credit, it probably expects maybe a, a, a higher rate of 3.5%. Um, and there's some banks that actually just expect a 3%, right? But let's see, let's see what happens. Um, and there's a rundown. Um, again, these types of articles, if you're not um, part of Bloomberg or you know subscribe to Bloomberg, you will get this and this, this type of article um, in the group. And I know Bloomberg, you do have to pay, but if you're in the group, you don't, right? As far as it comes with the subscription. Anyways, um, uh, well, at least I post these, uh, this, this, these types of articles and all these articles in, in the group. And so, um, so yeah, ECB still the hawkish, right? Hawkish out of uh, the central banks. So I do still expect uh, some more upside, and I think you know prices may come down to go higher. Buy an opportunity there. I mean, there is a buy an opportunity right now if you want. Um, but for me, I'm probably gonna maybe steer clear. And this is a really good reason to to get long um, or a really good setup, which mm, I think is decent around there they have to look down into the intraday anyways um yeah so that's that uh aussie dollar again a nice little pullback um for me i do want to get involved in this in this trade uh the 69 round number is decent but i think the 68s i think are going to be uh even better all right when you consider um you know fair value at least from this absolute low to this absolute high the best thing, you know, to, to look for really is look, looking at buying at value, right? Because if this is expensive now for that exchange rate, and this is was an absolute bargain for the exchange rate, then fair value in between is fifty percent. So any pullbacks, you know, you're buying for cheaper and cheaper, right? So um, I would expect some somewhere around this fair value to start to look to hold, um, and if if it goes even cheaper, that's even better bargain. Um, to the upside but let's see what happens i do really like this uh, 65 area in fact um as a uh, as a buy there's a great technical setup there many of the uh the guys will know that as a as a level cpr around there in the private group um but again if you're looking at buying the dollar right so we did come up to this obviously the supply zone and it did react from there creating now another supply right here supply yep so any pullbacks if you want to be a buyer of the US dollar into here be decent for a sell trade um, Aussie yen again Aussie yen really just pulling back after we've made you know some new highs I'm not really again interested in, in trading this pair um, lots of conflicts in terms of you know fundamentally it's not as clear not every pair is is tradable or going to be clear from a fundamental and risk sentiment perspective and when it's not you know you just stay out right you just stay neutral hence the reason why on my bias when it's clear right i go long when it's not so clear i just go i just stay neutral right and try and tra uh, trade the the best currency pairs um and the clearest divergences but anyways um looking at uh you know pullbacks if you want to be uh you know long on the australian dollar then you're looking at a pullback into that 89.50 area if you're looking at short trades then you're looking at a pullback into that supply zone or slightly higher into the 93s not really much to say about this to be fair um as i said i'm not really interested in taking that trade and gold so gold pulling back dollar strengthening gold pulling back now if anyone has been wanting to buy gold this is the opportunity right and i'm not saying that this is the exact level that you've got to buy not at all but the opportunity to buy on pullbacks yeah is what you know you're you're looking for so um ultimately uh, don't look at this as a you know scary you know bearish candles and that now you should be starting to um you know sell uh, gold right personally if you believe that the dollar is going to um is going to uh sorry one second yeah if you sorry if you believe that you know uh, uh the dollar is still going to weaken throughout the rest of the year then this is just a pullback into demand zones right no one knows which area it's definitely going to turn around nobody knows hence the reason why we manage our risk but look at this as a as a pullback opportunity to buy gold for cheaper right 
anyone who's buying up here expensive areas now are a bit underwater uh, smart money was probably doing a bit of selling after this uh, you know this massive uh, move to the upside I mean you do have moves you know like this that kind of don't really pull back for uh, for a while right and when I talk about pullback I'm talking about everything moves back to fair value at some point uh, everything does right eventually so if you see this move to the upside from here right prices haven't pulled back to 50 percent of the of the uh, range right so it's pulled back a little bit but not to 50 percent and so if you're looking at a decent area to look for a buy trade you know if that's expensive right up here and that is a bargain price then ultimately the 1788s again represent fair value so the further we come down the more of a bargain it becomes anything beyond fair value becomes you know cheap an absolute bargain price providing that of course the fundamentals are still in play price right and does not equal value right does not equal value not at all right prices can be obviously manipulated um, etc and in the short term prices are driven by um, liquidity right liquidity hunts and um, and market makers etc and positioning whereas over the medium to long term that's when you start to see uh, you know the value of an asset continue to either go to the upside or to the downside so this is just looking like a pullback for me um, if you're of the opinion that the um, the dollar is going to weaken towards the end uh, um, of the year over the next you know three to six months anyways uh, if you are looking to sell, of course, um, gold, then a pullback into this supply zone would be, you know, where you're uh, looking at getting short. Anyways, guys, that is it for uh, this week. Uh, take care. And if you are interested in joining the mentoring group, I look forward to working with you. Uh, be prepared to work, you know, quite hard. This is not going to be one of those um, easy peasy technical analysis, you know, you can learn in one day type, um, you know, mentoring sessions. And I say session, but, you know, mentoring courses, not at all. This is, uh, this is, there's a lot to learn in here, so be prepared to, to, to work, otherwise you're just wasting your time. Because remember, you're up against some of the smartest, or if not the smartest people in the world, and if you don't, you know, they're, then they're always outworking you. So if you're not gonna work hard, <clears throat> then, um, you know, and that's the minimum requirement, then you pretty much won't even stand a chance. Anyways, um, take care guys, and until the next video, speak soon. All the best.